Hello and welcome to this episode of Tradecraft Security Weekly. This is episode number 16. Uh, I'm your host, Bo Bullock, and I'm here with uh, Derek Banks. And we're on the road. Uh, this is uh, Virginia Beach. We're here Sands, for a, Virginia Beach. Sands, Virginia Beach. And we thought it'd be fun to do an episode of Tradecraft while we're here. So this is what we're doing. Um, it's what we do for fun. So what are we what are we talking about today, Derek? Let's talk about uh, pivoting tools through Meterpreter. All right. So why would you even want to do something like that? I mean, Metasploit is great, has tons of modules, but sometimes uh, you, you need uh, to uh, take an external tool that's maybe not a module or some functionality of Metasploit and uh, use that in your target environment. So how would you go about doing that? Um, so uh, that's where uh, uh, the SOX 4A module in Metasploit, setting up a SOX proxy, and using proxy chains comes in handy. Hmm. Specifically for Kerber roasting, so I've I've found and you know that there's lots of ways to do Kerber roasting, uh, and so what Kerber roasting is is when uh, you know you as a normal domain user are able to ask the Windows or the Active Directory environment for Kerber roast tickets that uh, then you can uh, take offline and crack. So you know the the details of that are probably beyond the the. Tradecraft Security Weekly episode. The length, uh, at least, the, right? The length, at <laughs> least, because let's face it, Microsoft's uh, implementation of Kerberos mm -hmm. is not exactly the, uh, the most easy and straightforward thing to understand and explain, but the gist of it is is I can grab these tickets as a uh, normal domain user and then potentially crack a, a service account ticket, typically something like Microsoft <coughs> SQL or you know or IIS or something like that. And so, so this is any domain user. It doesn't have to be an admin. It can that, be just anyone on the yeah, domain that's grab correct. these these tickets. That's right. And so um, you know, there's various methods to do that. Um, you know, I've, I've used PowerShell, but I've I've had a lot of luck when I have a interpreter session and I can use a Core Impacts uh, Impacket library and use an example script that they have called uh, Get User SPN. So you basically uh, take uh, through proxy chains in the SOX proxy and tunnel that or, uh, or route that through the interpreter session to uh, query the domain. So and that's what we're going we're gonna to combine the two things, <coughs> uh, the, uh, the SOX proxy and the uh, um, in proxy chains and the impacket library and, and Kerberos the environment and grab tickets. So uh, what you'll need for this, uh, Metasploit and a reverse TCP session. It seems that reverse HTTPS doesn't We've had some to, bad luck with uh, uh, reverse uh, HTTPS for, for some reason. For, yeah, for some <laughs> reason. And then um, you'll need proxy chains, which is part of Kali. Um, or if you're using uh, Ubuntu and installing things yourself, uh, it's in the repository, at get proxy chains. And then uh, the core impact uh, library off of GitHub. And now, it's a demo time. Demo time. So I already have an established reverse TCP session, and I'll list that. And so the this is my uh, internal lab environment. And so the first thing we'll do is we'll set up the SOX proxy. So use auxiliary server SOX. 4A, and so really all you have to set is the the server port or serve port. And this is going to create a listener on your Kali instance at this point, or your your C2 server. Yes, and so I'm going to go with uh, port 8080. I'll go ahead and run that, and then also what we'll need is we'll need a route. We'll set that up for the internal address scope. And this is going to route traffic through your interpreter session at this that, point. Yes. Right? Um, so I think that's good there. And so now um, for proxy chains, what you'll need to do is make sure that the proxy chains configuration uh, that that the port for proxy chains matches what you set up in, um, in, in Metasploit. Because proxy chains is going to be looking at routing whatever tool you're going to run through proxy chains 
to the, the yes. SOX 4A proxy. And so, uh, you know, a word of caution, this is opening up a TCP port on your system, which in this case, this is something that's out on the internet and is now listening on uh, TCP 8080. Uh, I, you know, if, if you don't have IP tables set up to, you know, maybe block that from everything except your C2 server, Perhaps you're, there is a chance you're that, allowing anyone to connect <laughs> into the internal network. Uh, you know, uh, in, in a production type scenario, I would probably not Bad take idea. that chance and, and do that. However, um, so I think we're ready to run this attack. Sweet. All right. So proxy chains get user SPN's uh, example script. Uh, then we're going to request uh, user tickets, uh, DC, uh, the DC IP address, and then my uh, non-administrative user in the domain. These are probably creds you got from, you know, either like you're running Mimikatz on the user's box or is there is, is phishing? It, yeah, phishing. Uh, some password spraying. Um, Just password spraying, yeah. yeah. Method that we use pretty often and are highly successful with at getting user yeah, credentials. So, so various methods of uh, gaining credentials and once you have a valid account. Any valid account. That's right. So in, in this lab environment, in my lab, I have uh, a SQL administrator um, that uh, you know, is also a domain admin in the environment, mm. which is Actually, something that I've seen on multiple occasions, I've uh, gotten domain administrator just out of the gate by getting Kerberos tickets and uh, then and cracking, cracking the passwords. Yeah, so uh, I guess Hashcat 3 maybe, I think, is when they introduce the hash type that you can take this and literally copy and paste it and then run it in Hashcat and, and crack the password. And, you know, we when we run these on assessments that we do, we find, you know, a number of accounts that are just like legacy accounts people have forgotten about. Um, yes, I uh, I've, I've definitely have ran into occasions where, you know, there was an old, old SQL server that had been running in the environment, was slated for decommission. A uh, customer had, had changed all of the passwords for their users to be like, you know, four, 15 characters. They neglected service accounts, specifically this old SQL server had a four character password. <laughs> so, and that led me to, you know, get to a point where I could elevate privileges in the domain. And mm -hmm. so, hey, better, better me than an attacker. And the other thing that's kind of amazing about this type of attack is like, so with, with Kerberos tickets, I mean, you take them, you pull them offline. I mean, if you, you know, you can, you can correct as long as you want. I mean, it's not like you're doing, an, it's not an online attack, so yes. it's not like you're going to lock, in a, yeah, lock out an, an account. An actual attacker perspective or an insider threat, I mean, you have all the time that you need. Mm. And, you know, at Black Hills, you know, we have a, a commodity a 4 GPU password cracker. Mm. And, uh, you know, I have a, a fair amount of luck doing this. Yeah, I would, I would even probably say that at, at the beginning of most of the assessments we do now is this is one of the first things we do because it's highly likely that provided like let's say we did an assessment for a week right um, if we get tickets at the beginning of the week and we start cracking them on Monday yes um, if we're not already escalated which is it's I mean it's common that we'll you know find another way to escalate an environment if we're not escalated by like let's say Wednesday or Thursday we probably cracked at least like one ticket yeah and um, you know you have that whole week to mm -hmm. to go through uh, various uh, methods of uh, you know of, of cracking and uh, also most places don't seem to be instrumented to try and uh, to, to, to detect this because mm -hmm. you know I haven't really seen an effective way of, of stopping it yes there are strategies but I mean in, in most environments I've been in um, you know this I, I get tickets to crack mm -hmm. so but, but what can you do so uh, for the blue team uh, you could log uh, Kerberos tickets requests at the domain controller you could you turn that on and log them but I mean let's face it I mean this is you know Kerberos tickets requests are going to be happening it's be noisy. and so um, you'll have to correlate that to say, hey, why is this one machine asking for, you know, lots of tickets? You know, maybe that's not. Uh, perhaps maybe a more effective way would be to uh, create a Honey a, a service principal name, a, a, a Honey account where you make the password easy to crack and make it enticing for an attacker. Mm -hmm. um, and um, then monitor if someone ever tries to log into that account. And, you know, if they do, you know, Priority one, you know, ticket for the Absolutely. incident response. Yeah, team you alert on that immediately. Yeah, absolutely, <laughs> right. 
So uh, that would be the route I would uh, more recommend for mm-hmm. you know a little bit of uh, offensive countermeasures. Awesome. So to kind of summarize what this whole thing was about, I mean, so we talked about we talked about using. Um, proxy chains to, to route Ker- like Kerberos uh, ticket dumping tool like like Impacket, right? Um, but I mean, that that's this method could be used for almost any other tool, yeah, right? Yeah, and, and in fact, uh, you know, there's another uh, Impacket script uh, that I've used effectively with this, and that's a secret stump. Mm-hmm. So you can also uh, take and, you know, use secret stump instead of, if you get to domain admin, instead of going in and, and getting the ntds.dip file, say like a volume shadow mm-hmm. copy using a ntdsutil, um, you can run uh, secret stump right against the domain controller uh, over the same method, and the advantage is you're not, you know, RDPing into. I've, actually, I've had a client before alert on me RDPing into um, a, a domain <laughs> controller because I wasn't an yeah. authorized administrator, right? Absolutely. And so, you know, this uses uh, uh, so secret stump. I think uses uh, a, uh, the replication service mm-hmm. uh, to communicate and not touching the disk. Absolutely. So I guess the thing to take away is, you know, if you're an attacker and you're using tools like Metasploit and you're, you know, re- highly rely on the, the, the built-in plugins that are already there, just keep in mind, you can use the SOX 4A module to route completely different tools that are not built into Metasploit through your interpreter sessions to an internal domain. Um, and, uh, you know, we talked about password cracking uh, and we talked about, you know, like taking Kerberos tickets offline, cracking them. Hey. The next episode, we're going to do a password cracking episode. So uh, make sure you check out the next episode for sure, because um, we're going to talk about some efficient ways you can go about cracking those passwords, um, so that you know it doesn't take you the full week to <laughs> to crack the Kerberos ticket. Hopefully, you get it in the first couple of days. Um, but uh, yeah, so you know we can find uh, Mr. Derek Banks here on Twitter at zero x I'm at Daft Hack. Thank you so much for watching. We'll catch you next week.